Hi, I'm Gilbert Cruz for Time.com, and I'm here with Michael J. Fox, author of the new memoir, Always Looking Up, The Adventures of an Incurable Optimist. Thanks for being with us, Michael. Thank you. Our first question is from Angel Paternina in Cartagena, Colombia. And Angel wants to know, how do you think your advocacy has affected the public view on stem cell research? Well, I don't know as far as my advocacy uh, uh, in, in and of itself. I think that I, I was happy and I'm gratified that I could be part of a conversation and in some ways maybe instigate that conversation at times when others didn't want to have it. And in that way, uh, um, people, people who may not have considered the issue considered it, and I think that that only benefited those of us who, who supported it. And uh, you know, certainly on, on, on the foundation front, in terms of uh, seeking out a cure and funding research uh, uh, in, in furtherance of a cure for Parkinson's, you were the second uh, largest funder after the federal government. And uh, I'm really happy about that and really pleased. We've dispersed about $140 million in research funds. How do you keep your optimism in the face of what some people would consider difficult circumstances? Well, I, it's a, I mean, I took a whole two books to try to answer that question, so uh, I don't know how, how quickly I can sum it up here, but, but I think mostly it's about, it's about acceptance. There's an expression that I, that I quote a lot, which is, uh, happiness grows in direct proportion to your acceptance and in inverse proportion to your expectation. So if I can accept what my situation is and, 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 and really own that and then it's fixed in space and then, then I can move all around it and I, I, have, I have other choices. I mean, I have no choice about whether or not I have Parkinson's. I have nothing but choices about how I react to it. And in those choices, there's, there's a lot of freedom to do, to do a lot of things and there's a lot of room for discovery um, in, in areas that I, that I wouldn't have otherwise found myself in. I see opportunities to, to be of service, I see opportunities to to, to, to do things creatively that I might not have done like right and 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 also it, it changed my, the dynamic of my family and the way I value my time with my family so it's it's really affected my life and believe it or not a, a positive way have you ever felt uh, cheated by having Parkinson's disease no absolutely not I, I it's 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 been a detour that I, I like I said that I wouldn't have planned or I wouldn't have designed but it's it's really led me to amazing places and to meet amazing people and to and I mean I enjoyed my work as an actor and I, and I enjoyed making people laugh and and whatever delivering whatever good they got to get out of it. But to to really feel now that I can uh, make a difference in people's lives and through advocacy and through through supporting research and and also putting a face on on a, a situation that's, that's difficult for a lot of people, that they struggle with in anonymity and, and, and feel that there's a certain stigma attached. And if I can help erase those feelings or, or lessen those feelings, I mean, that's just, that, that's a kind of privilege that, that few people get. And mm -hmm. it's certainly uh, bigger than, than being on TV every Thursday night for half an hour. Do you continue to act, or do you think your free time is best spent finding a cure for Parkinson's? Um, I, I, I act every now and then. I've done, uh, I, I've done a, a few uh, episodic guest spots on, on a few shows. I did um, Scrubs, which, uh, which was produced and, and, and uh, written by Bill Lawrence, who was one of my partners on Spin City. And then I did uh, Boston Legal, and I just did... Rescue me with Dennis Leary, who's also a good friend of mine. So in all those situations, there were situations when I, where I, I knew I could be comfortable enough if I said I need 10, 15, 20 minutes. Can you do another scene while I get get it together? And I knew that that, that would be copacetic. So, and it was, and so it was a great experience and a lot of fun. And and the other thing about acting every now and then is it keeps my health insurance current. <laughs> <laughs> what is your, what's your favorite movie you've acted in? Each movie has its own, it's, you know, it exists on a couple of different levels. There's the movie itself, and there's the experience of having done it. But I come to a predictable answer. I mean, it would be Back to the Future, the first Back to the Future, because it was just such a, a whirlwind experience for me. And I, and I was doing uh, Family Ties at the same time, so I was doing both. I was working like 18, 20 hours a day. I was 23 years old. It was just, uh, it was just a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And, and the movie itself holds up. 
uh, even though you know we're now we're almost at a kind of a, a one of the one of the uh, epochal you know kind of like segments of time that Marty traveled in. I don't know how you describe it, but it, we're, we're almost at where he went to the future. Mm -hmm. So um, it's kind of odd. Um, no hoverboards yet. No hoverboards yet. Yeah. How has your experience with Parkinson's changed your approach to your craft? Acting is all about um, about making choices that either reflect or conceal an actor's attitude in a situation. Um, so when you when your choices are limited. Uh, in other words, I may say, you know, any amount of Stanislavskian kind of inner method stuff may tell me that, that now is the time for my character to, to pick up this glass and drink. But if I can't pick it up without spilling it all in my shirt, um, what do I do? You know, uh, so I have to make other choices. So it becomes much more of a logistical puzzle than it ever was for me. Um, which is not to say that, that there have been some rewards in that. That isn't fun. It's a lot more exhausting than, than the other when I just, you know, when, when uh, you know, I was just bouncing around, I could do anything I wanted to do. But I think that what I found from the Rescue Me thing especially was that, is that, that, that really inner, inner, inner thing that made me be an actor in the first place is still there. It will still kind of push me to go to places that, that, um, that are fun and exciting and lets my, my adrenaline know that I'm doing something other than just living life, I'm, I'm, I'm attempting something.